So the most exciting thing I see is the ability for DAV to be the key enabler of that internet of transport. We've got to have a way for our be able to interconnect the transportation systems or whatever they may be, hyperloops, VTAs, trains, package deliveries, what, I don't care what it is, but they've got to be connected because actually moving those things around is key. That means we need to have a way to pay for those things. We've got to have a way to arbitrate access, find out the prices, book things, all those bits and pieces. So we've got to get that kind of infrastructure. And the thing I love about DAV is the potential to play that, to play that role or, or be a player in that role. So I've been working in the AV, uh, AI, AV, transportation, IoT space for 15, 20 years. Um, you know, I'm a big believer that we're going through a lot of transformation right now. You know, if we look forward to the next 10 years, you know, the changes could be massive. I mean, if you wind back the clock 10 years, yeah. obviously it's just a different world. Uh, I like to be in that kind of that 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 piece, the the, the cutting edge, but also like to be doing things which are you know, make impact, you know, get out there, make stuff happen. So uh, that's what I do these days. I basically consult in and around that, that space and it's hot right now. GM is largely a software transformation role. So obviously it's a company that's got a great number of connected cars, leading connected car fleet in that space. I was basically charged with doing the software piece of that, what kind of strategy, helping an autonomous, uh, moving innovation faster, um, actually being able to innovate on vehicles which take you know, three or four years to make a new vehicle, but the software process runs at a much faster rate. So how can that tie together? Uh, and that would then enable them to get into mobility services in the future, autonomous cars like the cruise purchase, uh, as well as just a kind of larger space. You're know, being able to act as a mobility service provider rather than a car seller. You know, in my background, I have a PhD in distributed systems. So, you know, DAV is a distributed system on steroids. Uh, I think there's an element of kind of ecosystem. I'm a big fan of ecosystem. You don't make a product on its own. It interfaces with a large element. And I think with DAV, that's key. So I think, to me, I see that as a, as a great value of being able to pull in some of those pieces, whether it be open source players or those other players that are kind of in the, the broader product space. Because it's all about transportation and that doesn't necessarily mean a car it could be these other bits and pieces you know, end to end transportation but also transporting packages and goods and all those other bits and pieces are, are you know key pieces are all ecosystem nobody's going to own all of those pieces it's going to be a patchwork of those players to me the biggest hurdle is the kind of the progression of technology to me, kind of the internet of transportation to some extent, right? We all use the internet, and we kind of assume it, and people share packets back and forth. But to get there, people have proprietary networks first. You know, they have point-to-point -point links first. And to some extent, they had to realize the value. And to be honest with you, the biggest barrier in getting to that dream is mindset. You know, enabling what we see in the internet was I think largely enabled because in part the government was funding it, DARPANET back then. There was also, I think, a kind of renaissance of people thinking differently back then. We need to make sure we have those pieces in place. The people need to be kind of viewing it not as, oh, well, I can get from A to B, but I got to think about transportation as essentially an element of the economy. That's going to be the key. But yeah, those key bits will be knocking down mindset barriers largely rather than technology barriers. I think it's key the the people, not only the AV industry, but in the transportation industry, the, the larger piece is key to enabling the ecosystem. As I mentioned, I think nobody's going to own it, the end to end, the, the whole piece. And so it's a combination of getting the players who do the best job in each of those pieces to come in to work together, but also to have the different mindsets. But actually the, the solution is a combination of the above. And so you need to have that multiple viewpoints uh, that will help get the right solution. But actually, and this is a key piece of the puzzle often, by having skin in the game, you overcome the mindset problem. And so, you know, for at least three or four different reasons, that collaboration is key to being successful. I see that future of transportation as that 
the end-to-end -end transport. I mean, in some cases, you know, you'd have a family vehicle still because you might want to take it on road trips and longer trips. But a lot of what we do, a lot of what I do, if I come to see you in San Francisco, I may drive part of the way, use the, you know, the VTA or the Caltrain some part of the way and then pick up maybe a, you know, a car at the other end to get to the office. That thing should be totally orchestrated for me down the road. I should be able to just say, hey, I want to go and see this person there in San Francisco. I need to be there by that time. And the system will tell me what's the most expeditious way, the cheapest way uh, of getting there. And I can pick my option. And, and, you know, that means that over the next five to 10 years, the sales uh, of vehicles uh, to personal people will probably go down. Uh, although those people may end up buying those assets and then putting them to systems. Say, okay, I've got a vehicle. I use it at the weekend for trips and going down to various places, but I'm going to put it into the system and have it do deliveries. That's the future, but that future is a much broader set of transportation services than even, you know, the initial autonomous services that we see today, package delivery, you know, personal transport, air transport scenarios. Uh, so those are all the tips of that iceberg that's going to come in the future. Thank you.